brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back. Tonight's show is a very special one as Express Air's Dr. Yik Alam answers all of your questions this entire segment. Now, these questions, which we solicited from our social media, Doc, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so our first viewer is asking, I think I may have acid reflux. What are the warning signs and should I see a doctor? Okay, acid reflux, that's a, another name for that is heartburn. And it's a very common symptom where people feel a, a burning feeling traveling up their esophagus. It's usually coming, acid coming from their stomach uh, due to improper diet, uh, lots of spicy foods, especially pica, and um, uh, sometimes the use of anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen and of course alcohol. So the warning signs of that are um, if it starts to become daily and you keep needing to eat Tums or some other kind of antacid, uh, you really need to get checked because you may have an ulcer. Another really important warning sign is if you see black stools or blood in your stools because that might mean that you've irritated the lining enough that, that it's actually bleeding. Okay, now um, I've heard that milk may help to reduce that, is that true? Um, actually, it's got a paradoxical effect. It, it, milk, um, of course, has calcium in it. It will calm your symptom initially, but you will get a worse rebound. So you wanna stay away from milk. Okay, now our next viewer is asking, can my high levels of stress be triggering my severe outbreaks of eczema? For sure. Eczema, asthma, these, these uh, types of diseases respond very significantly to stress. Um, when you're stressed, you, uh, one, and one thing that happens is that you'll perspire more. That ends up drying out your skin more than usual. And uh, of course, eczema is a dry skin condition, so you'll end up with a worse outbreak. Also, your immune system will not be capable of responding as well because it's too busy fighting the stress that you're under. So you can use your skin disorder as a barometer of how you're doing in your life. If you have eczema or psoriasis and you notice that you're breaking out, take a step back, notice what is happening in your life and what areas do you need to work on. Now, could they change like maybe what they're eating? Would yeah, that help reduce mostly that? it's to do with sleep, um, taking some of the load and pressure off yourself if, if you're doing too much, um, sleeping, eating well, resting well. Oh, okay, now um, I have children who have eczema as yeah. well and I notice that it, it occurs um, it like it increases at different times of the year. Yes. Does that have to do with like the changes in the humidity? humidity? Yeah, in the humidity and in, in the amount of heat that they're experiencing outside dry season versus wet season. Each person's different, but many people when they move to Guam from the United States will experience a change in their skin, usually for the worse if they're prone to eczema. Okay, now our next viewer's question is asking about laser skin treatments. Are laser skin treatments safe? They are safe. Um, depends which one you're doing and what it's for. There are many different kinds of laser skin treatments. Um, people with very dark skin pigmentation tend to have a higher risk with laser skin treatment because they can hyperpigment. That means their skin turns a little bit darker after. But usually this can be resolved. These days the technology is so amazing that almost any skin type can be treated for laser hair removal, for resurfacing, for toning, for removal of brown spots. Okay, and I know that you offer it at we your do. clinic. We do. What, what types of laser treatments we do, do you offer? We do IPL, which is a, a, a removal of brown spots procedure. We do tattoo removal, uh, laser hair removal. We do a skin resurfacing, scar treatment, many, many different things. Okay, now laser, that's for like, skin removal. Do you do it, I mean, I'm sorry, hair removal. Hair removal. Do you do it everywhere? Everywhere, <laughs> you name it their person has had the hair removed even on their head. We had one man who wanted to be bald and we removed his hair. <laughs> wow. wow. How many, how many treatments that does that take? That took a lot of sessions. He came back for about almost a year. Wow. Yeah, monthly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now our next viewer is asking, I have really bad varicose veins. Are there any risk factors? Yeah, varicose veins tend to run in families. Then uh, risk factors are obesity, of course after pregnancy, weight gain, that's another risk factor. Standing on your feet for long periods of time uh, and, and also sitting for long periods of time without getting up. So if you have any of those risk factors and you know maybe in your family you're prone to those, start wearing support hose. They are hot and a little uncomfortable, but you can get used to them and prevent the problem. Okay, but um, 
they're also known as spider veins, correct? Oh, there's Are two kinds. There's okay. two kinds. One kind is the, the wormy deep blue ones that are actually painful and they make your legs swell and then there's the kind that just are on the surface they're called spider veins and they're just the little red ones or the little tiny little blue ones that you get um, the tiny ones can be treated with laser the big blue ones need to be treated with laser either going inside it's an endovascular laser procedure or with surgery okay now um, when it comes to spider veins or varicose veins what does that mean when you start getting them? I mean, is there like problems with your legs? Or? What, what it means is that, you know, you, your, ver your vein is a long column of blood separated by small valves. It's really incredible. So when you walk, your muscle squeezes the uh, blood up to the next valve, to the next valve, to the next valve, all the way up. And this happens very quickly as, as the blood circulates. Now, if you're prone to it or you're quite heavy, there's a, there's a large column of blood. Um, your little valves can get damaged and then the blood doesn't travel up it kind of pools down now there's too much pressure now something has to happen with that blood and all that pressure so new blood vessels will form those are mm. called collaterals and that's how you'll get a varicose vein okay yes. all right um, our next viewer is asking about sunblock okay. should a sunblocks SPF vary with skin complexion I have very fair skin Pretty much um, everybody can benefit from the same level of sunscreen, which is at least SPF 30. The guidelines and the labeling on the uh, sunscreen has changed, so it's either 30 or 50, and it should say water resistant. Um, everybody can benefit from that. If you have very sensitive, fair skin, go up to the 50. But you need to know that the SPF 30 already blocks 96% of UVB. Uh, SPF uh, 50 takes it up to about 98 but neither one blocks much of the UVA. And the UVA is what also causes skin cancer down the road. So in, in addition to wearing sunscreen, please make sure that you cover up, wear a hat, and stay out of the very hottest day, uh, time of day between uh, about 11 and 2 p.m. All right, well, we are just getting started, so don't you go anywhere.